Are tires from electric vehicles 1,850 times worse than emissions on gas vehicles? Wait, what? I know I'm late to the party on this one since the actual study cited is from 2022, but since the New York Post and Wall Street Journal recently revisited this, and I have fewer than 100 subscribers right now, I can do whatever I want. It's time for the first episode of a hopefully long-running series, Beware, numbers in isolation. Today, I want to take on a topic that's hotter than Choose your analogy. The acceleration of a Tesla Model S Plaid. Or The uncontrollable fire of an electric vehicle battery. I first heard about this story through social telephone, and when it was first introduced to me, I heard EVs are 1,850 times worse for the environment than gas-powered cars. The New York Post was the last chain on the media, so let's start with their headline. Electric vehicles release more toxic emissions and are worse for the environment than gas-powered cars. Study. Well, that's pretty straightforward. If that's all you read, and I'm sure for some people it was, what did you just take away from that? Applying the rule of shortening headlines, it's pretty much what I heard. As we read past the big old words, we get to this. Brakes and tires on EVs release 1,850 times more particle pollution compared to modern tailpipes, which have efficient exhaust filters bringing gas-powered vehicles emissions to new lows. Let's dwell on that sentence for a minute and connect it back to the headline. Here, we have our first disconnect. The headline is that EVs are environmentally worse than gas-powered cars. In a more accurate, less politically energized statement, this says, brakes and tires release 1,850 times more particle pollution than tailpipes. Redoing our game of telephone and dropping different words, we get a different finding that, as we'll see, better reflects the actual study. Looking at media bias chart, we can see that both the Post and Wall Street Journal editorials lean right. So if you're watching this video, I don't think it's a surprise to you that the stance they take is in opposition to EVs. Shifting to the Wall Street Journal, here we get the headline, Electric cars emit more particulate pollution. They have greater tire wear, the source of particulate matter. California is trying to conceal that fact. Again, this is in the commentary section of the journal, but we definitely get a perspective with a purpose. The article highlights California's plan to ban the sale of gas-powered vehicles by 2035 and the potential for particulate pollution to increase as a result. The authors do a better job of walking the line of facts while certainly introducing their opinions in a politically charged manner. They actually cite California's role to significantly reduce tailpipe emissions. This does make me chuckle as growing up in the 80s and watching The Price is Right and hearing cars introduced of having California rated emissions, I wonder if these same authors would have been the proponents of the regulations they're now using to highlight a lack of need for EV vehicle transformation. But I digress. Back to the analysis, it is an interesting technical finding that tires and brakes are an increasingly important source of particulate pollution, and that's something that needs to be addressed. But from the game of telephone perspective, what did the average Washington Post reader take away from the first few lines of their article? EV's bad, big number. What does the scientific study actually say. Tires bad, big number. EVs get brought in to prove a point. And there are some interesting factors that we'll discuss that highlight potential risks from battery-powered vehicles. But I'll let you know right now, the game of telephone took a turn to try to emphasize a point that's not fully supported by the data. As we transition into data land, the New York Post includes the actual table from the study, though surrounding it with some less accurate interpretations of the data. This table looks at the mass of emissions from tires, based on driving conditions, newer used tires, and the impact of the vehicle mass compared to that of tailpipe emissions. Guess which word is missing from this table? Electric vehicles. From a data collection standpoint, EVs are even missing from the original study. That work focuses on tires versus tailpipes, and EVs enter the discussion tangentially. What were the vehicles they tested in the original study? It was a gas-powered Volkswagen Golf and Mercedes C-Class. So where did this data come from? It's a highly technical firm in England, Emission Analytics. They focus on all aspects of emission and are doing some genuinely interesting analysis. In their report, they write, comparing real-world tailpipe particulate mass emissions to tire wear emissions, both in normal driving conditions, the latter is actually around 1,850 times greater than the former. So to restate, tires are worse for particulate emission than tailpipes today. There's your big number. For a gas engine vehicle, when focusing on particulates, it's the tires that matter more than the tailpipe. They find that recent improvements in filtering and engine standards have significantly reduced emissions. The major factors that impacted tire emissions were driving style and vehicle mass. Back to the graph, the big bar on the left is actually the aggressive driving bar. 
They find that wear from aggressive yet legal driving is almost 80 times worse than what they consider normal driving. So if we really gauge what this table shows, it's that aggressive driving is way worse for both your wallet and the environment than a more gentle braking and acceleration. I've also been gentle on EV so far, so now let's get into where that comparison originates. Battery electric vehicles enter with this statement from the paper. The excess emissions under aggressive driving should alert us to the risk of battery powered electric vehicles. Greater vehicle mass and torque delivered can lead to increasing tire particulate emissions. Half a ton of battery weight can result in tire emissions that are almost 400 times greater than real world tailpipe emissions everything else being equal. The next sentence is key. Nevertheless, it is important to say that gentle BEV driver with the benefit of regenerative braking can more than cancel out the tire wear emissions from the additional weight of their vehicle to achieve lower tire wear than an internal combustion engine vehicle driven badly. I don't recall seeing that in any of the media analysis. So what does this mean for EVs in the game of telephone technical summary? We learned earlier the two big factors that impact tire wear are driving style and vehicle weight. When it comes to driving style, EV's party trick is instant acceleration and torque. If not reined in, this is a factor that causes EVs to be worse than traditional vehicles and something that environmentally conscious drivers want to be aware of. As we can see from the bar graph, driving style is the biggest determining factor for tire related emissions. The second factor is weight, and I want to spend some more time here, as more big numbers in isolation get thrown around. Back to the New York Post, the author makes a big deal to highlight the weight of EV battery packs. The Tesla Model Y's battery weighs in at 1,836 pounds, and the battery of the Ford F-150 Lightning is almost around a ton. However, that's not the whole story. What matters isn't the weight of the battery, it's the weight of the overall vehicle. EVs also have far fewer mechanical parts, particularly missing that big metal block that's under your car's hood, an engine. EVs use much lighter motors to drive the wheels, so rather than emphasize the weight of the battery, they should be looking at what's the curb weight. The Wall Street Journal has the right idea in mind, but I disagree with their analysis. They state that EVs are 15 to 30 percent heavier than their equivalent, but fail to include what they're comparing. To get an apples to apples comparison, let's look at a model that has both a gas and fully electric version. The Hyundai Kona offers us that comparison with the gas powered version coming in at a little over 3,000 to 3,500 pounds, while their fully electric version is 3,571 to 3,891 pounds. This gives us a difference of three to 600 pounds, not the full ton battery weight difference that's often cited by EV critics. This is also more in line with consistently driving around a couple more passengers depending on whether you're going to or from the Golden Corral. For a more consumer driven comparison, let's bring Tesla back in. If a Tesla Model S is in your consideration set, you're probably not debating between that and a Honda Civic. Chances are you're looking for something in a similar price and performance range. I'll say a BMW 5 Series feels like a more reasonable comparison. Looking at their weights, the Tesla comes in at 4,500 pounds, while the BMW is about 4,100 pounds, a difference of 400 pounds or less than 10%. Cherry picking vehicle weights runs rampant in these studies. If you're in the market for a car and you are environmentally concerned, I would definitely take weight into consideration. Looking at emissions analytics data for the impact of weight, the added 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds adds about 10% particulate mass lost. There isn't data given, so I'll make an assumption that this trend is linear. Looking at our more apples to apples comparison of curb weight, EVs likely result in three to 5% more particulate. This is worse, but it's not as bad as highlighted. Since we're on the subject, I actually wanna pick on a study from Emission Analytics. In this article, Do No Harm, they do test an electric vehicle against a hybrid. Again, the focus is on tailpipe and tire related emissions. They tested a Tesla Model Y against the Kia Niro Hybrid. Let's compare the specs of these two vehicles against the findings of the gaining traction article. Kia offers 139 horsepower compared to Tesla's 378. Tesla nearly doubles the torque at 364 pound-feet compared to Kia's 195. The Kia's front-wheel drive compared to the all-wheel drive Tesla. And lastly, the curb weight of the Kia clocks in at 3,285 pounds, while the Tesla was over 4,363. So the Tesla is 1,000 pounds heavier, almost three times the horsepower, and nearly double the torque. Guess the result in tire emissions. Yeah. The Tesla causes more emissions. Shocker. The Wall Street Journal also cites this study, saying that the electric car weighed about a third more than the hybrid and emitted a quarter more particulate because of tire wear. Total direct emissions went up, not down, when the electric car was driven. This isn't a complete sentence. 
the study evaluated two cars that I'll argue shouldn't have been compared to reach their scientific findings. Yes, a Kia hybrid is worse than a Tesla Model Y regarding their tire emissions, but that doesn't translate to all EVs are worse than all hybrids. It reiterates the findings from the first study that weight and acceleration are primary drivers for tire emissions. The emission analytics author attempt to justify their selection of vehicles, indicating that both are smaller SUVs and therefore in the same consumer selection set. However, coming in at just over $36,000 for the Kia and nearly $68,000 for the Tesla, I'm not sure how many consumers looking for a new car have that as their selection set. Maybe I'm wrong, but if I'm looking to spend almost $70,000 on a car, I'm less likely to be cruising the dealerships in the low to mid $30,000 range. Combining dramatic price and performance differences I disagree with the summary finding that EVs are universally worse than hybrids. Again, our focus needs to be on acceleration and weight, which do risk being worse for EVs. The media also seemed to miss this conclusion from the study. Moving from a gasoline ice to a hybrid would be an improvement. It's better in every measure. They then add, but moving to the BEV is not such an improvement due to the increase in tire particles. This also feels like an incomplete sentence as the real technical finding is based on weight and driving style and not fuel type. So what do we do with this? If you stuck around, thanks, and I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments. Hopefully you've learned something, and particularly to beware of numbers in isolation. In this case, the New York Post definitely cherry-picked its presentation of a nice technical study to highlight some key issues that need to be addressed as we continue to improve the environmental impact of transportation. Saying EVs are worse than gas vehicles isn't really the story here. If we want to reach a general conclusion from the emission analytics study, it's that tire manufacturers need to work to reduce the particulates and their toxicity for all vehicles. EV drivers really looking to save the environment need to be cautious in their driving style. And if you really care, pick the lightest car possible. I hope that helped. If nothing else, when you go to your family reunion, your Tesla and your uncle and his Ford F-350 tells you that you're an idiot and killing the environment, at least you have another link that you can send him that he won't watch. We do what we can. Just watch out for the potato salad that's been sitting out all day. With that, thank you so much for watching. Keep thinking, beware of numbers in isolation, and we'll talk again soon.